I'm talking about uh, some studies we're engaged in looking at the human microbiome. That's the communities of bacteria that live in and on the human body. And we're specifically looking at those communities in neonatal gut samples. Uh, and relating those communities to the propensity for those children to develop ATP at age two. So looking at how the microbiome may be responsible for driving disease development and how changes in very, very early life in those communities, in their composition and in their function, may be the genesis of disease. So it turns out that if we look at children who are less than six months of age, that we can partition the children into groups, three different groups. Each one has a different microbiome composition that is relatively conserved across individuals within that group, but distinct across the three groups. And there's one of those groups with a, a small number of children in it. This is a population-based study that we were engaged in. It's the uh, WHEEL study led by Christine Cole Johnson and Dennis Ownby, a birth cohort of uh, children in the Detroit area. And what we found is that, that that third group of children have a very compositionally distinct microbial enterotype or gut microbiome. Um, and it's not just compositionally distinct, it's metabolically distinct as well. And the, the gut microbes in, the, in those children are producing pro-inflammatory fatty acids and, and lipids. And so we think that the beginning of the disease occurs in very early life and that there's cumulative damage over time um, because these children do not have an appropriate gut microbiome colonization pattern. So they, they typically are allergic. So they will uh, be allergic to allergens in the environment, to foods such as peanut or uh, fish, for example. Um, and they require medication for this. And the other issue is that ATP or allergy is commonly, though not always, a precursor for asthma development in childhood. And we can really only typically diagnose asthma clinically at six years of age. But quite frequently in those children, allergic responses develop in much earlier life and it's it's typically though I say again not always a precursor to asthma development so if we can prevent allergy development in children the hope is that we may actually reduce the burden of childhood asthma in the population which has risen in prevalence quite dramatically over the last several decades Yeah, it would be wonderful if we could use that moving forward. This is the first study of its kind to look at. Uh, we looked at 300 stool samples from these children. It's the first of these large-scale studies. What would be really wonderful would be to see that this occurs in European populations or Australian populations, that we have validation that it is this one type of microbiome that is really associated with disease development in childhood. I think if we had that validation, we could start thinking in terms of early life diagnoses of children who may be on a track towards developing A to B, uh, and perhaps subsequently allergic disease and, and asthma. Um, but I think until we have those additional kinds of studies and validation, we're not at a point where we could um, use it as a diagnostic tool. The indications are, are good, but it, we need validation. I mean, we, we see similar trends across different diseases. So uh, we had a study uh, relatively recently showing that the, the composition of the gut microbiome is related to the degree of immune activation in HIV-infected patients who have their disease controlled by medication. There's no detectable HIV in their circulation. But those that have more activated immune responses usually have uh, a shorter uh, lifespan and they succumb to cardiovascular and a range of other diseases. And what we have seen is, again, the gut microbiome composition and activities of organisms within that gut microbiome are related to that degree of immune activation. We want to know who specifically in these microbiomes are actually producing these pro-inflammatory products and who are the key organisms, more importantly, in healthy microbiomes that actually promote immune homeostasis and uh, depletion of allergic responses. Ultimately, we would like to develop a therapeutic approach to uh, treating patients and perhaps even neonates in very early life, though we must be very careful um, because these are very, very susceptible infants who are just developing their gut microbiome. But ultimately, we would like to develop uh, a multi-species community of organisms that we could use to inoculate children and provide them with the key functions necessary to appropriate immune maturation and prevention of allergic disease.